I'm out here doing my favorite fall time activity, trolling for striped bass. I just got a hit. <laughs> Nothing like catching a fish to build your confidence. It's one of the toughest things out here this morning, trying to find a lure that's going to be effective. Really every day it's a struggle. Uh, I try a lot of different things. I have uh, built up a lure arsenal that uh, work for striped bass. I've gone through many different manufacturers, many different types to come up with a lure selection that generally if one thing's not hitting, I can find something else that will. That's what it's all about for me. I get a lure and I try to present it at the right depth. And that's really what the selection process is for a lot of these lures. Some of it's action. Some of these lures have a particular type of action, a rolling wobble action that they really like. But a lot of times it's really just finding that right lure to get to the depth in which they're at. Because if you can't get to the depth that they're hanging out at, you're not gonna catch many fish. So here's an overview of some of the hard plastic lures that uh, I have. Most of these I use as uh, some sort of trolling lure. Um, we have some topwater poppers and uh, some other topwater style lures. And then I categorize things uh, for the depth in which they are categorized from the manufacturer. And I'll give an example of some of the things that I do. So if you look at this particular deep diver, I have it uh, marked out. but. This one I have a 13 foot. I write on every single lure what the advertised depth is. So I basically whenever I pick it up, I always know kind of what it is. The other thing you'll notice is that anything that has treble hooks on it, and if I'm trying to store it, I put uh, rubber bands on them. It makes it really easy to store a whole lot of lures together without getting them all clogged up. And uh, as soon as you pull one lure out, you end up pulling out 15 lures. So here's a look at what I actually take with me on the water. So some of them are really great at springtime fishing and some of them are really great at fall time fishing. So this is a cotton cordell red fin lure. This is really for me the lure that made striped bass fishing fun. Uh, whenever I really first started uh, trolling and trying to fish for striped bass, the information that was out there that I was able to see really just didn't work for me. So it wasn't until I started using this lure that I actually started really uh, understanding how to catch fish. Sometimes you don't really understand how to catch fish until you, until you start catching fish. If you're catching nothing all the time, it's really difficult to figure out anything. So this was the first lure that helped me figure out what they wanted. So this is a layout of really what are the most effective lures that I have for trolling for striped bass in the Chesapeake Bay tributaries. These are the most effective. And for representative purposes, I put on this side, uh, this is a Rapala lure. So this is a Rapala X-Wrap, like an X-10. I have never caught a single fish on a Rapala anything, especially striped bass. Um, I put them out, matter of fact, like last weekend, on one side I had Yozuri, the other side I had an X-Wrap that was a comparable size, comparable depth. I obviously caught no fish because I said I've never caught a fish and I was catching fish on the Yozuri. I'm not saying that people can't catch fish on uh, a Rapala. All I'm indicating is, is that sometimes the fishery that you're in is gonna be vastly different than someone else's. So whenever I'm telling you that these lures are effective and this one doesn't catch me anything, you may be in the exact opposite situation. Maybe your Rapala lures are catching you all the fish and your Yozuri's aren't catching you anything. So when I'm evaluating lures, the primary things I'm looking for are size, the depth, the speed, action, and color. Those are the things that I'm looking at whenever I'm choosing a lure. So the size, which is of, I found, critical importance. Uh, there are some people that are in bodies of water which the size of the bait that they're eating is five, six inches. In that case, you would use lures that are five, six inches. In the tributaries that I'm fishing in the Chesapeake, currently in the fall time, most of the lures, excuse me, most of the bait that are coming out are about three and a half inches. So that is a perfect mimic to some of these. This is a four inch and this is a three and a half inch. So most of them you'll see the size, they have a torpedo shape. When the striped bass hit these lures, they generally hit them from the bottom. They're not hitting them from the top. So as long as the bottom profile looks correct, you're generally okay. And as long as the length is about what they're hitting, you're okay. The issue that you have generally is if you're trying to fish a size of lure that is outside the range that they're hitting, you're not gonna catch much. So the second factor is depth. Depth can be controlled by speed. 
So those things can go hand in hand, depth and speed. So some lures like a deep diver, like this Yozuri deep diver, the faster you're going, the more you're going to, further you're going to push it down. The more line you let out and the faster you go, the further you're going to push it down. So this lure, I operate it roughly from six to 15 feet. So this is a lure that I know that is effective and I can get it down to ranges, uh, depth ranges that some of my other lures can't. I don't have a lot of lure selection of a, a lure that has this profile, this size profile, three and a half inches, that I could get down to 15 feet. The other thing about depth is, if you're talking about fall time fishing, most striped bass that I fish for, and whenever I say most, I mean greater than 90%, actually it's probably greater than 95% of the fish are suspended. So the days that I've fished, the, the deepest I've ever had to go in the fall time was 15 feet to get on them. That's it. So the speed that I choose to operate these lures are based on the lure themselves. Um, I have seen some literature and some commentary where people believe that you need to operate lures at four miles an hour or two miles an hour. I've seen people say something in a kayak, you need to be running them 400 miles an hour or faster, or, you know, people are using them too slow. Really, I think that's a short-sighted comment. It is really more important to have the correct action of the lure than it is the speed. The example would be this Bomber 14. If I try to operate it at four miles an hour, the action isn't nearly as good as it is at basically 3.2 miles an hour. So there is a sweet spot for all of these that I've found that whenever I operate them in that range, I get the most hits on. Some of them, whenever I'm working them a little bit faster, the example would be these Yozuri Mag Minnows. Whenever I operate these closer to four miles an hour, they are more effective. Another one that has a huge range of, oper uh, of operation is the Yozuri Deep Diver. I can operate this at three miles an hour and I've operated it up to four miles an hour with great effect. So some of these, and another one example is this Yozuri 3D Crystal Minnow. This one has a huge range for me in effectivity. Uh, so I can operate it at three miles an hour and I've operated as fast as 4.2 miles an hour and caught fish on it. The Cotton Cordell, that's an example of one that for me, operating it slowly gives the best action. By slowly, I mean roughly two miles an hour is usually the range that I try to operate this at with the best effect. Uh, these soft plastics, these, hard, these jigs with soft plastics, I can kind of operate these at almost any speed. They don't have a vibration that they're really giving off, they're giving off an action. So I've operated these up to four miles an hour and I've operated them as slow as dropping them in the water and just let them jig by themselves. You know, just, you know, I'm going like a half a mile an hour and I catch a fish on them. So the action of the lure is another important variable. Some of these lures, like this cotton cordel, have a heavy wobble to them. They have a heavy wobble and wiggle. So that kind of looks like whenever the striped bass are feeding, if they hit a fish and it's been damaged, if you see it in the water column, you'll see that that fish is wobbling quite significantly. The striped bass are going to home in to that fish that is having problems and it's going to take it down. So whenever there are a lot of bait in the water, and they're hitting the surface of the water, I like using this cotton cordell red fin because it mimics a wounded fish quite well. Another lure that I like is this Yozuri crystal minnow. I don't know if it has the action it has because I've changed the hook, hooks out, but this fish right, this particular lure here, it not only does a quick side to side and a little bit of roll, but whenever I'm pulling this in, it also darts side to side a lot. There's a lot of darting action that I get out of this lure. So that's another action variable that really can come into great effect if your lure darts as you're using it. And this particular one I know does because I see it happen all the time. So darting, wobbling, and wiggling. Some of the lures don't have a lot of wobble, they have a lot of wiggle. The example would be these deep divers. These deep divers have a lot of wiggle and they also have a lot of vibration. They put off a lot of vibration in the water. And that could be another variable that comes into play and helps you catch fish. So the colors that you see here are generally the colors 
that are most effective for me in the Chesapeake Bay tributaries. A gold yellow cover, color because apparently striped bass see the color yellow better than any other color and white. And lastly, a more natural color, whether it be a silver blue or a silver greenish color. Those colors do really well for me. If you see this Wonder Bread color, you might think that it is, you know, just some weird color. This particular color pattern is probably my most effective color pattern. If you see lures that I have, I have a bunch of them <laughs> that have this Wonder Bread sort of color pattern and they are very, very effective. So if I were going to recommend a color, I would probably recommend a natural color. And that's only because usually natural color, you'll always get something to hit. So when it comes to soft plastics and jig heads, I would say you're probably best going with white.